unless you've been living in a cave, you've probably heard about the Trello 2.0 beta. And I'm personally super excited to see time and effort and investment going into this tool that I love so much. But you might be avoiding it because, well, change is not easy. And if you've gotten used to the tool the way that it was, you don't really want to see things happening and, and changing and moving around. Or maybe you've dabbled a little bit, but you're feeling a little bit lost. I get it. And just like with any other tool, this new beta, this new 2.0 is not perfect. It gets better every day as they listen to our feedback, but it's never going to be perfect because no tool is. What it is, is cleaner, faster, and in my opinion, more powerful than ever. So I'm going to show you around a little bit so that you feel a little bit less disoriented and you can hit the ground running. But before we dive into this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial or upload. Okay, so let me start by saying that I'm going to show you the most obvious changes, the things that are the most likely to trip you up, as well as just highlighting some of the new features that, in my opinion, make this so much more powerful than it even used to be. And I always thought it was pretty powerful before. But I want to make sure and kind of give a little, it's not a disclaimer, but just want to make sure to call out that even what I show you right now might be a little bit different by the time you go into your own Trello beta. Because like I said in the intro, they are constantly making little tweaks to try to respond to the feedback that they're getting from us. Even how it looks today is a little bit different from how it looked last week. And if you haven't been using it every single day like I do, then you might not notice these little changes. They don't exactly call attention to them. But I'm one of those people that's in Trello like constantly. It's basically my second brain, my personal assistant, whatever you want to call it. And so I notice those little things that they're doing. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing so far. There's also some pieces of what I see in my beta that you might not see yet, even if you've opted in. I think they're slowly rolling out certain things across the people who are in the beta. So if you're opted into the beta and something on your screen doesn't look the same as mine, it probably just means it's coming. You just don't have it yet, but you will have it. And specifically what I'm talking about with that regard is the sleek new minimalist design of the cards. So we'll get to that. But one of the first things that you might notice when you come into the beta is that all of the stuff that used to be here, all the ways that you used to navigate from board to board, they're gone. You don't have this side panel anymore. And that is the first confusing piece, right? If you come in here and you don't know how to get from board to board, that can be frustrating. And I know that there are some people who are not a huge fan of the change that they've made here. Honestly, I get their point, but at the same time, I'm kind of getting used to the new way to switch from board to board. So you'll have to make your own opinion as you start using it. Instead of having all of those things up here, the drop downs that used to let you change workspaces, go from board to board, you could see like your recent boards, your starred boards, all of that. Don't worry, they're still there. They're just not up here anymore. Now they're down here in the board switcher. So you can simply click on this or you can just hit B and it will open up your board switcher. All of your star boards are right here, just where they used to be, okay? All of your recent boards, again, right here, just where they used to be. All of your workspaces, you can see as you scroll down through here. Yes, I'm in a lot of workspaces, no judgment. But you can also see your workspaces up here at the top. Now, the reason that I'm calling attention to this up here instead of just coming down here is because if you used to use workspace views, you may have a hard time figuring out where they are because they're kind of hiding a little bit in this new version. And I have a feeling that that is a big part of why a lot of the people who are missing the sidebar, why they're missing it so much, because that was a much quicker way to get into those workspace views. Now you do kind of have to dig a little bit. And so, I, I don't know if that's the reason that they don't like it, but if it is, I get it. And so I would suggest to Trello that maybe they look at a quicker way to get us there again. But basically, if you want to get to your workspace views, you need to click on the workspace up in this right here. You can see all of your boards here just like you used to. It's just a smaller window, right? But now you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And this is why I could totally understand if this is why people don't like this new navigation, because if you have a lot of boards and you can see there, I had a fair amount of boards. 
that's a long way to have to scroll to get to your workspace views, but they're still there. So you just expand that and here are your different workspace views again. So they're there, it's not as convenient to get there. So hopefully that's something that they're listening to the feedback and they will make a shift there to make it a little bit easier, maybe pin it somewhere so that you can get to that a little bit faster. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do with that. But basically, you're going to move from board to board here. You just simply click on the board you want to go to, and it'll take you to that board, just like, just like it did when you had that on the side. Now, let's talk about that piece that I said may or may not be a part of your beta view yet, and that is the simplified card view. So in the original version, when you opened your card, you would have all these buttons on the side. All of your comments would be way at the bottom, which isn't a huge deal, but if you have a super long description or maybe a lot of checklists and all of that, it can be a little bit arduous to get to your comments, and that might be exactly where you're headed. It also depends on how you use comments. If you're sharing your board with other people, it's fairly obvious what comments might be used for, right? Communication. But if you're not sharing it with other people, there's still a lot of potential uses for that. For me, when I am working on, for example, a video for YouTube, I will use the comments to kind of think out and plan out what I wanna say in that video. So being able to see that more easily without having to scroll up and down all the time comes in really handy. So let me explain where your comments went. As you can see, there's a comments button down here at the bottom. When you click that, it opens up on the side here and all of your comments are right here and you'll still be able to scroll through them just the way that you did before. But if you don't use comments at all, then your card is just so much sleeker and cleaner. And they've been making some changes up in this area right here. They used to have a couple of things up here, members and dates, I believe. And then labels were kind of hidden until you added a label and then it would show up as an option here. They've now also added checklist up here. When they first rolled out this simplified view, instead of having this add button here, there was a plus sign button down on this bar. And I think even though it kind of stood out, I think a lot of people missed it and they weren't exactly sure where to find all the things that they were used to adding. So Trello listened and they've moved it all back up here where we kind of more expect to see it. But what if you're using custom automation buttons? If you've ever worked with me or seen any of my videos, I use those a lot. It's a great way to set up some automated workflows that you manually trigger when you need them. Well, they're still there. They're just hiding here under this little automation button on the card. So there are all of your automation buttons and you can also add more here, just like you could on the side. Same thing with your power-ups. Now on this particular training board, I don't have any power-ups that appear on the card, but if you do have a card level power-up, maybe you've got Google Drive on your board or you've got snooze button or things like that, you could click here on power-ups and you will see your power-up options right here just the way they were on the side but now hidden until you need them as you can see when you have custom fields they appear here on the card so you're not going searching for any of those if you add attachments or checklists they also appear here just the way you would expect them to so that's some of the changes that are happening with the overall design but what about the more powerful part i was talking about so a couple months back i did a video showing you the stuff that was coming maybe you saw that maybe you didn't but just in case you didn't i'm going to go ahead and give you a high level view of that here just so you can see some of the things that have been added in that are just making this so much more powerful for personal productivity in specific so the first thing we're going to talk about is the inbox and this is our basically our brain dump this is our catch-all for the things that we know that we need to remember to do and to be able to prioritize into our boards and into our day but they're coming from various sources you can manually add cards into this inbox from your mobile device or from your computer at any time and then you can switch from board to board while you're on the inbox so you are able to just drag things in from everywhere which is super awesome if you ask me but what's even more powerful is that this inbox is not just for manual entry if you have emails that you need to remember or do some planning with before you respond you can forward those emails into the inbox. You simply forward them to inbox at app.trello.com and they will appear here. The cool thing is that's powered by Atlassian AI. And so when you send it in, it's gonna actually take information from that email and format your card in specific ways based on that. So this one in particular, you can see it dropped a due date on there. It gave me a summarized description of what was on that card. It didn't add the attachments. I did that because I'm planning something for you guys, but 
Anyways, AI did all of that. All I did was forward the email. And in addition to that, if you use Teams or Slack, you can also save messages and send them over here. So when it comes to Slack, you simply save the message and it gives you the option, if you've got it connected over here, to send it to your inbox. If you're in Teams, one thing to note is that, as far as I can tell, you can't do this from just a regular chat. It has to be as a part of a team conversation in Teams if that makes sense. If you use Teams, you know what I'm talking about. So it has to be in a team feed, not in just like a personal chat with someone. Does that make sense? But you can forward all that stuff over here. And again, it will use AI if it sees anything relevant and format that card for you. The other thing that they've added in is the planner. I love the planner. It's super awesome. This is connected to your actual calendar. For right now, this can only sync directly in with Google Calendar. But if you're like me and you use Outlook, there is a workaround for that. I did a video showing you how you can still get your Outlook calendar to come in here. So I will make sure to post that above so that you can go check it out. If my workaround doesn't work for you, it's probably because of the security protections of your company. And so I'm sorry, but you're probably out of luck in that case. But I do know that Trello is working on a direct connection with Outlook Calendar as well. What I don't know is if that security is still gonna be a problem for you. It probably depends on your company. So keep an eye out for that. But what's awesome is that when you take one of your cards from your boards and you drag it over into the planner, it creates not only a little section here on your planner so that you can prioritize your day and all of that. But if this is connected to your calendar, it's also creating a focus time on your calendar. So if you set aside a certain amount of time to work on things, it actually blocks you out so that people aren't able to book over your calendar and start trying to meet with you while you're in your focus time. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about it because it really protects that time that you've set aside to heads down, get some work done. And that alone is super powerful in managing your personal productivity. I get it, change is not easy, but that doesn't mean it's bad. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated and overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. I hope you liked that video and more importantly that you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a fellow solopreneur. And make sure you check out the description for links to how we can connect and maybe even work together.